Welcome to the Content Rocks Podcast, a show about all things content by Kentico, .NET, and Azure for people who want to learn more about headless technology. And now, here's your host, Brian McKeever. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that fantastic new interview. To this day, I'm still excited every time I hear it because for years I had nothing and it was just me saying those words. It sounds a lot better when... I have someone who's done it a nice way for us. So welcome to Content Rocks. This is Brian McKeever, as the intro said. I'm really happy today to be joined once again by my good friend, Andy Thompson over at Luminary. Andy, Hi, how are you doing? Really good, thanks. Really good, yep. Uh, good. We managed to find a time slot that works for us. I think it's dark here in the morning, but the sun's coming up shortly. Yep, yep. And it's a special morning. It's the day after your birthday. So happy belated birthday, sir. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Awesome. Well, the episode today is going to focus on a challenge that a lot of us in the agency world or web development world in, in general kind of kind of hit in recent years. And, and that is, if you're worried about SEO and you're in sort of the Jamstack space or even maybe just the general web development space, your marketing team or your clients may come to you and say, hey, is this good for SEO? Like, we're using modern Jamstack tech. Maybe it's all client-side rendering. Maybe it's React, Angular, Vue, whatever. And they're worried about, can we achieve good SEO with this? Because a lot of project goals usually achieve or usually include achieving good SEO. And Andy, when you hear the, the statement of, hey, is this good for SEO or is it not? What does that mean to you in your experience? Yeah, um, there's a lot more. Because SEO is a very deep topic. Um, I don't know you can find SEO consultants that will say that. But what it means to me, I guess, if someone says, is that good for SEO, there's a number of factors. There's, um, is it good for the, ro is it robot readable? And is it good, able to be indexed in Google? Is it optimized with all the right metadata, all the right content, all that sort of stuff? But nowadays, it's even, it's, it's more important as well to meet core web vitals, accessibility, best practices, um, and all, all those sorts of things as well. And, and more recently, that initial page load speed has become more important as well. So for me, when someone says, is that good for SEO? I always want to dig a little bit deeper and say, um, well, uh, well, let's see, you know, what, what are the SEO issues that we might need to solve? There's a lot of factors involved. Yeah. Right. And don't forget the whole explosion of mobile devices and how Google exactly. really does focus on almost a mobile first approach to, to indexing yeah. and, and how it generates results and then it ranks you. That's critically important because you don't want to slow down that mobile device because people are just going to leave the, the site. They're never going to stay there if, if it doesn't like load in time, basically. Exactly. If you go to light, uh, do a lighthouse audit or, um, or Google's page speed insights, you often see that the default now for running an audit, it'll run mobile and desktop, but it'll default to to mobile with a throttled, um, slower um, mobile connection to, to simulate what is a, a huge percentage of the audience. And actually, this this is a super relevant conversation because it was funny. We were we were kind of just chatting in our, our Teams or Slack the other day about you know how how is this good or bad if you're using certain technologies, you know if you're doing SPA or if you're doing server side rendering. We were kind of going back and forth, and it was just such a good conversation. I think we both agreed that, hey, let's turn this into a podcast and maybe share our yeah. take on it with people who listen and maybe we'll give away some tips and tricks along the way. So uh, it's also kind of a, a, a personal thing for me that I was burned by this one time. And I hate to admit it, but I'll, I'll admit my failure here. We built a, I think it was an Angular app back in the day, a couple of years back. And we weren't really aware of, of this, I would say, challenge when it comes to SEO. And we launched and we actually we did know that you'd want to make sure that the Google bot could could render the JavaScript as it loads because that's how it works. When you're doing a client side, a pure client side app, if the Google bot finds it, it's going to try to actually run the JavaScript. Yeah. And uh, you know, we we got a, a, a check mark on the initial check of yep, it, it was running it just fine. And then later on, as we kind of got through the project uh, and launched and went live, the the SEO of the site just tanked. It was it was really hit negatively and the client called me very unhappy about it and i just didn't understand what i mean we had done the checks we thought it was working the speed was fast the user experience to the end user was great but as it turns out we did the old trick of using fetch as google and lo and behold in that little developer tool there was an error it couldn't handle 
one of the lines of JavaScript the way it was written with its JavaScript engine, even though the browsers were doing it just fine. So, you know, this was kind of early days. Maybe Chrome was just new or newer. I wouldn't say new, but it really it burned us. And we had to go back and actually correct and somehow make it work for the Google engine. And that did fix it. But yeah, that was that was a very hard couple of days uh, in, in, yeah. in my life. And I don't want to go back to that. Mm. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've been burnt a couple of times as well. Um, definitely burnt badly. Again, in the early days when, you know, React and Angular and Vue and everything were, were sort of really exciting developers for that, for that client side experience, because that's what the big driver was a little while ago. You could make these sites that felt super quick, um, especially after that first page load. And we did the same thing. We built a real sort of app-like experience. We got really excited. We, you know, we were using a headless CMS, so we could just pull the content in using JavaScript directly, and it was super fast. Um, and uh, we built it, and we did the same thing. We made the sort of assumption that as long as Google could um, and other search engines could render JavaScript and index it, that oh, that's fine. Then we don't need to worry about SEO concerns because. But there's a lot more to just rendering the site. So for ours, we did the Googlebot thing as well, and we went through that and found out that it could render. But still, um, we ran into a whole um, a whole series of issues with that with that sort of single page app um, spa approach the fully client side rendered and th there were other ones for us one one was the uh, discovery of the hyperlinks so the being able to crawl deeply into the site um, and so Google could index the the home page and some of the main landing pages however we found that it wasn't finding a lot of the deeper links that it would find if if you had a sort of a nice uh, list of actual URLs that all link to each other because a lot of these URLs were actually just in the JavaScript, they weren't actually right. in, in an HTML page to be spotted. And another yeah. one that we found was um, uh, we ran into huge issues with another part of uh, optimization of a site, which is not really it's kind of search engine optimization. In a lot of parts of the world, people find all of their content through social media. And what we found is like while Google could render the site, social media sites couldn't. Um, you load a deep link and they would just load the the single page app JavaScript, and they would be getting the, the metadata for the the home page, the root of the site for any URL that you pass through. So that meant we had to go through this whole process of creating a sort of a proxy that could sniff out whether it was a media crawler and then pull <laughs> the metadata out of the CMS and serve that. And it ended up we basically built the site again, uh, server a, side, I, just a social media. Yeah. I think there's a term for that, like ghost rendering. You actually do some ghost rendering to, to fix yeah, it. Right? And, and that's actually, ironically, that Google will penalize you for ghost yeah. rendering. Yeah. So um, that's actually a, a literally bad for SEO. <laughs> so um, anyway, but we, again, we worked around it. There's, there's workarounds, but that was, um, that was a painful experience. And, and, um, and in another project later on, uh, a much bigger one, um, we, uh, made the mistake of heading down that path again and 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 realized halfway through and had to implement a, a whole bunch of server-side rendering to get around a lot of challenges as well. Um, well I think, so, yeah. you know, the, 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 one of the things that complicates this whole topic is if you just kind of do some searching for what you would normally do yeah. as a developer, like where are my best practices at? What are my reference guidelines here? You're going to find article after article that says, oh, yeah, no problem. Google, Google can run JavaScript and it's, it's yeah. going to be just fine. But I think we were talking how good SEO is not just the fact that Google can run JavaScript. That's right. If that if 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 all you had to do was make sure Google could see your website and then you had good SEO, um, there would be no SEO industry. Um, <laughs> there's there's a lot more to it than just saying can 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 a search engine technically see my content. There's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, you know, we've talked about the problem and some issues a little bit. What what are maybe some ways that if you're listening and you're new and you're not sure what to do in this scenario and people are asking you, I think we should kind of cover some options for yeah. the for the, the choices that you have. And there are a couple. And sadly, there's pros and cons to all of them. As with any consulting answer, it depends. Yeah. Yeah, let's absolutely. start from like client side fully and then kind of move up the the scale from there. I, we, we've dabbled in it a little bit already, but you know, the benefit of client side is, as we talked about, user experience, speed, Absolutely. maybe developer happiness because it's easy for them. They connect right up to whatever CMS they want. 
And yeah. especially if it's content and headless, it just it just works, right? It's like, oh, exactly. this is simple. But and if that's what you need, if if SEO in discoverability is not what you need, say you're actually building a web app. Um, mm -hmm. and you need people to log into it and see personalized content or their own things, absolutely go for it. If, if you're not looking for Google to crawl through all of the content, um, great. It can be amazing. And that experience is amazing. You can, you can use progressive web app features for offline access, all sorts of things, um, uh, push notifications, all those sorts of things. So there, there is a place for the single page app, just not if you're, right. not if you're going for the best SEO possible. And yeah. frankly, the, the technology choices are actually almost overwhelming. For, for what you can yeah. do in this, you know, yeah. create React app, Angular, Vue, yeah. I don't know, Svelte. There's there's tons of them. I don't, yeah. it, it, it's crazy. So there's that aspect of it too that, frankly, I don't want to think about too much. But <laughs> uh, you know, even even static site generators can can output sites like that. You know, Gatsby, Next, all the things. Yeah, they can. Talking. Well, that's um, sort of the next. That's that's the next option. A lot of people move to actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, there's there's static sites that you just talked about. So that's. That's the other end of the scale, really, isn't it? Where there's there's you don't there's no JavaScript really involved. You just you just give the the pure markup. You render it all on the site, and you rent um you render it all pre-render it all. Sorry, so your CMS or an static site generator will render all the HTML pages, and that will load incredibly fast. Um, and have a, potentially that's where you get the potential for those you know all hundreds across Lighthouse, you know, like just incredibly, incredibly fast, but that comes with its trade-offs as well because it's not dynamic anymore. You know, it's basically, it's it's like the good old days where you've exported from uh, from Dreamweaver or front page or something and just uploaded your HTML site. Um, so that's the the next option. And that, that is, you know, it's hard to, hard to beat the SEO of just a perfect right. HTML page sitting there in a CDN. Right? I know, I, but, I've been doing a lot of work lately with Azure Static Web Apps too in this realm and yeah. I've fallen in love with static generators and the ability to just make a commit in GitHub and have it automatically deploy out to the world. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic. It's fast. And as you said, there's just some, some really nice benefits to it. But, um, and actually in the SEO world, it can be one of the best options because you can actually yeah. generate everything on the server side in, in a way it just, it doesn't change. So really it's that user experience that you might not have the best pros with because maybe it's a little bit harder to make it fully interactive in case you need to do something very, yeah. very dynamic. I mean, there's some ways, which is into another option here, but um, it, it could it could also be a good choice, which is why I keep saying it depends. Yeah, it could be. And then I guess the most popular next option is the is that sort of hybrid approach where you have a, where you use something like a Gatsby or a Next or a Nux or Gridsum or something, and you, you're rendering out using, um, you're building using React or Vue or something, and you're rendering out um, so you're building a single page app, but you're also pre-rendering. So you deliver those initial pages. And so you get that same single page app experience, instant page loads after the first one and dynamic React um, sort of uh, components and, and, and a lot of that sort of stuff. However, it gets around all of those issues around discovery and social media crawlers and indexing and everything because it still renders out the initial pages. So if anyone goes to a URL, they load an HTML page and then it does a thing called rehydration where it load, where it transforms it into a single page app in the page. So that's super, super popular at the moment and that provides an incredible user experience and removes a lot of the cons. However, there are still some downsides too, um, to that. Um, and which, which we've seen, you can get all those amazing Lighthouse scores for accessibility, SEO, best practices, our own website. Um, I don't know if you've if you've seen it, it has a, a 100 score on Lighthouse for SEO, but uh, because it is a a, a, a hybrid um, Jamstack um, static site with rehydration, um, it needs to load quite a bit of JavaScript up front too. So you get the the site loads, but then it has to load all the other stuff in the background to transform it. Um, so Google punishes us a little bit for that first page load. However, a user wouldn't notice. So for us, we want the user experience. And when you click around our site, it feels like a native app. It does. So far. It does. But, I mean, really, it's like you're I'll you're do kind it. of doing twice the amount of work in this yeah. scenario. And that's the yeah. that's what Google doesn't like. It's like, oh wait, you're you're yeah, forcing exactly. us to do a lot of work here. But yeah. so I, I will admit it's, it looks great. I was browsing it the other day. I really even all the way up here in uh, in the US compared to wherever yeah. you're hosting it. It it flies from from my standpoint. It flies for for a user once they've loaded it, um, but 
Google doesn't care about that. Google just yeah. wants to know how fast it loads on a on a slow 3G connection somewhere in Africa. <laughs> um, right. And yeah. Right. So that's that's a trade-off we're looking at. But there are things you can do there too. You can dive deep into the documentation. You can you can lazy load things. You can use the uh, React uh, next loadable components. Thing. Yeah, oh, we can't go into details here, but there's a lot you can do and stay tuned on our blog. Right. <laughs> well, then lastly, there's the almost like anti-Jamstack solution, I'll say. I'll go back to the yeah. old days of completely server-side. You're running a framework like maybe .NET, and yeah, yeah. you're doing it that way that from an SEO standpoint, you can achieve some really amazing results, yeah. right? So yeah. the, the, the challenge though with this option is you've got to score well in Lighthouse still, and you actually need to do a lot of optimization on the server side possibly yeah. and, and then caching and it's a lot more responsibility. Yeah. But for some scenarios, it could be a very good compromise because it, you, again, Absolutely. you can still make a very fast server side site in net i mean blazing you can. i mean that was before the before jamstack came and sort of um w was so popular i mean you and i were doing that for decades right that's that mm -hmm. was that was what we did we would build a a client a server-side application um and give it enough resources you need a lot more you know, server infrastructure to run one of these because you're doing all the work for every 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 client that visits the site but um it's yeah if you optimize it really well you use cdns you use caching all that kind of stuff um uh, it you, it can tick every every single box, and you can still use. It do, doesn't mean that you have to be using one of these behemoth um, CMSs. You can still use a headless CMS. You can still use a lot of that technology. Where you just offload the. Uh, you just do all the all the hard work on your server instead of expecting the the uh, visitors machine to do all the work. Right. I mean, that's the beauty of of headless, especially with content. You can connect it to any tech stack you want, and it's yeah, it's really kind of work. Yeah. So, all right. Well, you know, kind of at the end of our time, trying to keep it a little bit shorter today. I do appreciate you joining me, Andy. It's been great. I think uh, hopefully people who have been listening have learned a little bit about it's not such a simple answer when it comes to SEO that's good and powerful in the Jamstack world. So if you do have questions or if anyone's listening has a question for you, Andy, you want to give yourself a little plug there. Where, where, do, where should they reach out to find you? Go for it. So I'm uh, Andy Tompy on, on Twitter, um, or you can probably guess my email address at luminary.com because my name's Andy. Um, and uh, yeah, or LinkedIn, reach out. Let's talk. Fantastic. And if you did like today's episode, feel free to subscribe on my YouTube channel where the episode is actually hosted. In fact, I got to throw this out there. I have this new little uh, thing I'm very proud about, which is at a button that I can't find easily. But right there. We made it. So the show has hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, and I have a new Vandy URL. That's how to go get there to watch all the episodes. Andy has joined me at least two or three times, and I'm sure he'll be back again in the future. But uh, this has been the latest episode of Content Rocks. Really appreciate you all listening, and uh, thanks for joining, Andy. Thank you. See you later.